Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to be taking a look at some improved game compatibility, new games that are booting and have now become fully playable, as well as tons of other improvements to Yuzu and Emulator for the Nintendo Switch platform. In the video, we are going to be taking a look at such games as Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu, Pokemon Quest, Super Smash Bros Ultimate, Diablo 3 and even the newly released Fire Emblem Three Houses. Now that all of that is out of the way, let's jump straight into the video and take a look at all of this improved compatibility. Starting things off with Pokemon Let's Go, thanks to improvements to the emulation of the software keyboard for the Switch console, this title can now be considered fully playable. Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Pokemon Let's Go Eevee previously required a game save to be dumped from your Nintendo Switch console in order to get in-game at all, and thanks to the previously mentioned fix, this is no longer a requirement. Several other severe game crashing bugs have also been completely fixed. One for example is the crash that would occur when you leave any of your Pokemon in the Pokemon daycare and then try to retrieve them. Previously, what would happen was you would put your Pokemon into the daycare, but then when you try to take it out, your game would just softlock and completely crash, meaning that it was impossible to level up any of your Pokemon in this fashion. This new fix paired with all of the optimizations to not only the game's emulation itself, but also its compatibility with asynchronous GPU emulation means that Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee have never been as playable on the emulator as it is right now. One thing I do want to note in relation to the compatibility and usability of asynchronous GPU emulation with this and many other games on the emulator is the fact that sometimes when you're playing your games and you transition from one scene to the next or one area to the next I guess is that your game audio can speed up while your game movement speed actually slows down. There are in fact two ways to fix this issue and you don't even have to close the emulator at all. The first way is to simply enter a building or move to a new area and the second one which you're going to see me use in a few moments is to simply map the hotkey for a toggle speed limit to a key on your keyboard and as you're about to see in the gameplay my game speed has slowed down while the percentage has actually sped up and I have completely fixed it by simply pressing this hotkey for the toggle speed limit and then pressing it again to limit my frame rate back to 30. This is apparently a game synchronization issue, which only happens when you are using async GPU emulation. The reason most people use async GPU is because it gives an absolutely enormous boost to your performance, however this issue with the game slowing down and speeding up can become problematic. Hopefully the two fixes I have just demonstrated to you are going to help you to use this feature and maintain the best possible performance in this and any other games that suffer from the issue. Now that that bit of troubleshooting advice is out of the way, let's move on to our next title, a game that is now booting and has become fully playable on Yuzu, Diablo 3. This is yet another title which, thanks to the previously mentioned software keyboard fixes, has seen an enormous jump in compatibility. Diablo, also similarly to Super Smash Bros Ultimate, required the unmap and map physical memory updates which we previously saw in the last few weeks, and as you can see by the gameplay displayed on screen, this game is now basically perfectly rendered, and although it's not at its full performance when you're using it at its native 60 frames per second, and similarly to Bayonetta 2, Diablo 3 also uses dynamic FPS, which means that you can fully use and utilize the Force 30 frames per second mode in order to play this game at full speed at 30 frames per second. In fact, both myself and GameDev, who you may know from Yuzu's official Discord, were able to play this game in full co-op mode at basically a locked 30 frames per second using an application called Parsec. Now, if you've never used Parsec before, it's basically like a screen sharing software that allows the other players to connect to your PC and set up virtual controllers so that you and any of your friends can play any of your local co-op games perfectly. GameDev and I even recorded our local co-op shenanigans, so I'm going to edit and upload that video for you guys to check out and enjoy in the next few days. Also, if you guys would like me to do a guide on how to set up and use Parsec for a local co-op, 
let me know down below this video in the comments section. Parsec is pretty awesome because not only can you use it for emulators, but you can also use it for practically any game that has local co-op functionality. So that's probably enough of Diablo for now, let's move on to our next title for compatibility, Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. This is yet another Unreal Engine 4 game, and similarly to other games like Octopath Traveler, it has extremely broken and corrupted graphics. Performance wise, it actually ran quite well for me between around 25 to 30 frames per second, and again, as with Octopath Traveler, hopefully once they fix these graphical rainbow barf, as we call them, issues, this game should become fully playable. Let's move on again and take a look at our next title, Fire Emblem Three Houses. While I would love to say that this game is fully playable and perfectly rendered right now, unfortunately this couldn't be further from the truth. What you are currently watching is in fact gameplay footage of this game booting on Yuzu emulator, however its speed has been sped up by 3000%. Due to some memory related issues that are currently not solved, this game unfortunately runs at about 0.5 frames per second and even though it does actually render some graphics once it gets in game, even those rendered graphics are very very broken and corrupted. It's also pretty much random look that you're going to even be able to load into game and get any kind of graphical output like this and since it's running at 0.5 frames per second and lower sometimes means that it's going to take you an eternity to get to any kind of render state like this. For example, to get these screenshots for you guys, it took me about an hour and 25 minutes to get to this stage of gameplay, so at least for now, Fire Emblem Three Houses is completely unplayable on Yuzu. Our next port of call for compatibility is yet another game in the Pokemon franchise, this time Pokemon Quest. Again, thanks to the improvements in the software keyboard, this title is now basically considered to be fully playable on Yuzu Emulator. Now, obviously, I know that this game isn't going to be the top of anyone's list when it comes to game compatibility, however, I still wanted to include it considering that this game is 100% free on Switch, meaning that practically everyone is going to have immediate access to it. Moving swiftly along to our next game again, let's take a look at Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled. Again, thanks to the same changes that made Super Smash Bros Ultimate go in-game and render graphics, Crash Team Racing is also now booting, gets to its title menu, and for some people, if you have enough luck, they are even able to load into gameplay. Now, unfortunately, in all of my game capture for this video, I wasn't able to get Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled to go in-game, I was only able to make it progress as far as its menus, and as soon as I pressed any buttons in those menus, the game would just soft lock and crash. Hopefully, again, since now this game is booting and actually doing something for the first time on the emulator, the developers of Yuzu can get it fully working as I would absolutely love to have a proper kart racing game available to play on Yuzu. Moving on again to yet another very popular title for the Nintendo Switch, let's take a look at Super Smash Bros Ultimate. As we saw and looked at in my previous video on Smash Ultimate, this game does actually now boot, go in game and render its 3D graphics. Well, at least somewhat correctly. You can see, however, that at least right now on publicly available versions of Yuzu Emulator, all of the character models are basically going to be T-posing. We did, however, discover that if you enter into the training mode, as long as you jump around the arena, you are going to be able to move and actually see how the game performs. However, it is still the case that if you move around regularly or if you perform most actions aside from some taunts or some basic attacks while you're jumping, the game is still going to completely freeze to 60 frames per second and just softlock the emulator. Using this training mode and loading into different arenas, you can however see that most of the graphics in these areas are completely fine, and aside from some fairly heavy bloom issues and the previously mentioned softlocks and character T-posing, the game seems to be rendered quite well. On top of this, one of Yuzu's GPU developers, Blinkhawk, has posted several images on Yuzu's official Discord showing off that he has fixed many of the graphical issues with this game, listing those images with a notice that these fixes are very, very buggy and still require a lot of work before they can be released to anybody in the public. Again, this just shows how awesome Yuzu's developers are, and even though we unfortunately don't have access to any of these fixes just yet, I am super excited to see what the developers are cooking up for us in future. This includes the resolution scaler which I showcased in a few of my videos not too long ago. 
Unfortunately, we still have absolutely no estimated time of arrival for that feature. As soon as we do have one, I will let you guys know as soon as possible. For now, let's move on to our very last game of this compatibility report. Let's take a look at some improvements in The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. So thanks to the addition of conditional rendering in the Patreon preview last month and its now inclusion in the latest Yuzu Canary versions, this means that the weird issues with NPCs not moving in the game world, similarly to what we were seeing in previous builds of Simu Emulator, has now been fully fixed on Yuzu. Thanks to the addition of this conditional rendering, it has also fixed several physics and graphical rendering bugs in the game. For example, with explosions, the smoke that appears once you kill an enemy, and literally dozens of other effects are now correctly rendered in Breath of the Wild on Yuzu. Even more impressively, they have also fixed an issue with micro stuttering in the game, and even though its performance isn't exactly ideal or what many people would consider playable, it's still really cool to see this game motoring towards a playability in future. Again, as I always say, Breath of the Wild may not be very important to you on Yuzu right now considering that it's already fully playable at really good performance levels on Simu. You also do have to remember the fact that Breath of the Wild's sequel is going to be releasing and that game is only going to be available on the Nintendo Switch. Since we also have confirmation of the fact that this sequel is going to be using the exact same game engine, the correct emulation of its predecessor is only becoming more and more important as the days pass. And as usual, once any new optimizations or improvement come to any of your favourite or some of the most popular games on this emulator, I as always will make sure to let you guys know as soon as I possibly can. In the meantime, if there are any games that you would like to see me test on Yuzu, please let me know down below this video in a comment, and if I can either buy that game for cheap or if I already have access to it, I will test it out for you absolutely no problem at all. Before I go, at the end of this compatibility guide, I want to give a huge thank you to all of my supporters over on Patreon.com. If any of you guys out there in my community would like to help with the day-to-day -day running of BSOD Gaming, please consider heading to the Patreon link in this video's description and pledging to support the channel. Pledging and donating helps to pay for things like electricity bills, internet bills, games for testing and absolutely everything else required for the day-to-day -day running of a YouTube channel. So to all past, present and potential future supporters, thank you guys very, very much. If you enjoyed this video, remember to hit the like button down below as not only does it help with the visibility of this video, but also of my YouTube channel as a whole. On top of that, if you want to stay as up to date on all of the goings on in relation to Switch emulation, remember to hit that subscribe button and also click the bell icon so you get notified whenever I upload a new video. Once again guys, thank you very much for watching, have a great day and I will see you in the next one.